jump right into it. Richard Alexander in the house, uh, attorney Richard Alexander, and uh, you know, attorney counselor. You take great pride in being an educator as well. Oh, very much. Yeah, I've been doing that twenty years, almost as long as I've been practicing law. Yeah, That's it's, awesome, it, man. Listen, uh, honestly, if the, if the money was available, you're <laughs> I, right. I'd quit practicing law tomorrow and concentrate just on uh, teaching. It's something cool about passing along information, doesn't it? There's just something. Yeah, you know, it's just like an innate, uh, you know, human, I don't know, something to do with the experience. For me, I, I love the immediacy of the light bulb going off. Yes. You know, I can see it. I can feel it. You know, I can, I can drink in that. And yeah. I, I just really enjoy, you know, the, the closeness, the intimacy of the student-teacher relationship. Right. You know, because, um, you know, they, they look up to you, man. They, they yeah. really do. They say, wow, you're the one that's going to be responsible for my education at, at this level at this point in my life and that's a tremendous responsibility yeah and it's great to have those people that actually see it and they they want to be a part of the change and they right. want to develop themselves you know i love i'm personal development i'm all into it i love it uh, one of my favorite books i just read is uh, chris voss he's a ho former hostage negotiator uh, for the fbi top negotiation strategy and it's, it's just great i love talking about that and you know kind of passing those lessons along to people on my team or people you know whoever will listen right yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly yeah so so it's fun but so tell us about your day-to-day -day. you're you're practicing law here in tampa bay uh tampa bay that includes you know pasco pinellas hillsborough counties yep and uh you know it's it's great i i've become so familiar with all the different attorneys and judges and procedure in the courtrooms you know how everything's done according to the particular counties uh you know that's one of those x factors that uh not a lot of people know about it right. is sometimes about who you know Yep. And how judges are going to rule and how judges are going to look at certain motions and certain requests, uh, how certain prosecutors uh, look at certain cases, uh, also defense attorneys, you know, on PI cases. You know, it's um, I've been fortunate. I've been fortunate. Yeah, that's great. So when it comes to I've heard it said when you go to trial. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's almost like a 50-50 chance. I mean, you you try to look at all the way all the evidence. You try to understand, you know, the, any of those unknown knowns or unknown unknowns, right? And and you try to bundle all that together and put it into a case. But is it really? I've heard it said so many times by different attorneys that it, you you never know what it's going to come out to be when you go to no, trial. And that's true. And what I think one of the things is that you know we're not allowed, obviously, to have any conversations with jurors. And uh, it's sort of an unwritten rule that you don't talk to the jury even after they've rendered a verdict, mm -hmm. regardless of how they do it. Right. And, you know, we we even kind of, um, we kind of have some qualms about even approaching the alternates after they've been formally dismissed by the judge. Mm. You know, we don't, we don't even like to approach them. Right. And uh, so it's sort of an unwritten rule that you just don't talk to the jury even after the case is over. Yeah. And I, I think it would be an incredibly valuable tool for trial lawyers. And, you know, maybe we just need to do more of that and just try to remove that quote unquote stigma associated right. with it. Yeah, that's interesting. So there seems to be a stigma around that. It's, it's like I said, it's an unwritten rule. Trial yep. lawyers just don't approach jurors after they're after they, you know, discharge their duties. Right. And we, we just don't do it. Uh, yeah. You know, it's nothing nothing uh, bad about it. It's nothing unethical about it. We're, right. We can, we just don't. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, what kind of, give us a sample for our listeners out there, viewers. Of course, now we're on Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Roku. Uh, we're seen worldwide now uh, through a lot of our networks, but, um, you know, syndicated talk show here. Who who are you looking to talk to? Who, who out there would, would need your help and might not know it? Well, uh I'm, Unfortunately, and I want to put that word in quotes, is that I practice a type of law that I don't see people at their best. Right. You know, they've either been arrested mm -hmm. or they've been involved in a car accident, which is typically a very, both of them are very traumatic events. And, you know, one of them is through no fault of their own. The other one is, they, you know, probably made a bad decision. And, you know, I'm going to see people that are broken mm -hmm. or for lack of a better word, either they're emotionally broken um, physically, in cases of personal injury, um, you know, all of them want the same thing. All of them want to know that at the end of the day, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they all want to know. It's like, sure. you know, listen, how long is this going to go? What's going to happen to me? Uh, what, you know, what can I expect? You know, clients' expectations are paramount. I'm yes. sure in any one of our industries. Managing expectations. Client, yeah. Managing expectations, exactly. That's critical to I think the success of any business. Sure. But that, that's a big part of it, you know, because like I said, I see people that, um, 
have just gone through very traumatic experiences. Yeah. And um, especially on the PI side, because sometimes we see people that are physically, I mean, hurting just really bad. They can't even sit down. And yeah, yeah they're, you know, they're hurting. They're, they're in trouble. Yeah, personal injury is is an area that, you know, you, you see it advertised so many places. People yes. are trying to grab, you know, grab that next case. Um, and I think it's worth being said that a lot of times, a lot of these these uh, attorneys, they don't actually go into the courtroom. They they look their their court, you know, you can look it up, you can do the research, but a lot of them advertise like they do, but they don't. And then. Uh, when it comes time to trial, you know, so so if you're choosing that type of an attorney, are you really doing yourself the best, you know, that you can do for your for yeah? Your listen, case? in the in the age of the internet, good you know, good observation, Brandon. But in the age of the internet, just go on, ask, look around, look at ratings, clients. Yep. You know, the internet has changed the game. Yeah, as to how we rate any profession, mm-hmm. and uh, defense attorneys, especially you know, representing Geico, State Farm, Progressive, whoever yep. it is, they know. Trust me, they know who they have to be concerned about, Mm -hmm. and they know who's going to settle. Right. And if they know you're going to settle, they will undercut you. Yeah. So it's like a strategy in their minds. They see the strategy. It's like a chess game, a chess match. Yes. But they understand that there's actually no real threat of the court case itself. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I can. Do you mind if I give a shout out to a? Please do. You know, Jack Gordon. Yep. Uh, you know, he's uh, well known in the area and well deserved, but he he actually put up a billboard a billboard fairly recently and I loved what he had on it yeah. that I had to call him from the highway yeah. to tell him how much I loved what he had on it. <laughs> on the yeah. bottom of his billboard he actually said, uh, take us to trial. Seriously. Yeah. You know, and that was it. And I went, oh, my God, I, I, I love that. You know, and he's good. board certified. You know, not a lot of us are, but he's, right. he's board certified. Uh, and, uh, you know, just a really nice guy, but he means it. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the insurance companies know it, too. Right. Yeah, so that's going to help people, you know, understand their, their decisions and, and that they are positioning themselves to get the highest award possible. Correct. Yeah. Now, are you seeing with these cases, how do you, how do you get the punitive damages? Those are the ones that you that they're kind of punishing the, the offender. Do you, do you get punitive damages? Do you see that happen a lot? No, punitive damages, uh, they're, tip, they're not for negligence cases because by definition, if you're negligent, there was no intent. Okay. Okay. So punitive damages, you have to ask for permission. You have to ask the judge for punitive damages. You can't plead punitive damages. Okay. Because you have to show through the discovery process that you can request right. punitive damages because that is purely money. That right. is like, as you said, that is to punish egregious behavior right to send the message right to the industry if you do this if you act like this previous defendant right this is what's going to happen to you yeah we're going to hit you where it hurts the most and to corporations that means money the pocketbook absolutely and, and i think if i remember correctly it's the kind of the, like the mcdonald's case with the hot coffee you know they were serving hot coffee that was radiator scalding hot coffee right. and they had all these different uh, thousands of complaints over the years but they didn't act on it Right, and that was knocked down considerably at the at the appellate level. I mean, yeah. a lot of people don't know that. Uh, okay. Big Tobacco is the perfect example of punitive right. damages. Right. I mean, it was in the tens of billions. Wow. The punitive damages. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Uh, and funny thing about that is uh, the real estate market didn't blink. Wow. So it didn't really hurt Big Tobacco. So that's how much money Big Tobacco. Has. They are that big. <laughs> the settlement was. I'm not kidding. What I'm about to say, but the settlement yeah. was about two hundred and forty-nine billion dollars. Holy. With a B. Wow. By the way. A lot of money, man. That's, That's a, lot a lot of money. It's a lot of change. Great knowledge here from Richard Alexander, local attorney. Support the local economy. Attorney Richard Alexander, Alexander Law. Right. All right, so we're going to tell you some top tips, nuggets of advice, parting words of wisdom. Mr. Scott Kepler, Mortgage Approval Group. Thanks, Brandon. Um, my, I guess my parting words of wisdom would be if you're thinking about real estate uh, or you're thinking about mortgages, you've got questions in reference to your finances, uh, reach out. My number is 813 813- Four 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 eight five three seven, or you can find me online at scottkepler.com. And um, my advice is free, and I'm here to help. scottkepler.com. All right, Richard Alexander, attorney Richard Alexander, that is, Alexander Law. Yeah, um, actually, I'm going to bootstrap on what Scott just said, is that uh, second opinions. Yeah. You know, if you want to get a second opinion from a professional, uh, I think it's you know imperative that you do so just for your own state of mind, your own comfort level. Aside from the medical profession, if someone's going to charge you for a second opinion, 
you know, just move on. Yeah. You know, because I get a lot of phone calls saying, listen, I'm, I'm already represented, but can I talk to you about a case because I'm not happy? Right. And I said, sure, I can I can talk to you on that, you know, on that right. level. But, you know, get a second opinion. If, if, if you feel that it'll just let you sleep a little bit easier at yeah. night, you should do that. Yeah. It's, it's why would you not almost. It's one of those things like some things in life are why would you? The others are why would you not? Why would you not? This is one of those things where, you know, it's gonna, not going to cost you anything, but get that second opinion so that way you can, you're, either two things are going to happen. You're going to reaffirm that first opinion or you're going to learn that, hey, I almost made a mistake. So it's, it's one of those things, you know, why would you not? So uh, great advice there, Richard Alexander. Um, all right, Julian, tell us something good here. Tell us what's up, what's going on. Well, if anybody in the community would like to get involved, you can check out our website, childrenscancercenter.org. Um, we'd love for you to come out to Golf Madness this Friday. Golfmadness.org is where you can get your spectator tickets um, and then save the date for the gelatin plunge, June 15th. Um, we're excited to get the whole community involved and raise some funds for these kids and families battling cancer. Yeah, right around the corner, man. Save the date for that one. That's a real good one. Uh, the gelatin plunge. Kids out there are going to go crazy when they see that That. Uh, basically just like an outdoor pool full of gelatin right <laughs> they have a good time sliding into that